look at part two today of the advanced hire 2016 multiple choice. We're going to be looking at questions 11 to 20. If you've not already seen part one, then um, I will link that down below and in a card at the corner. So for question 11, um, this is a kinetics um, question. So we're looking at a reaction 2A plus 2B to give you C. And we have a rate equation of rate equals K brackets A brackets B squared, uh, which the following could be a possible mechanism for this reaction. So what this is relying on you knowing is that the rate equation is always of the rate determining step or the slowest step. And what the rate equation tells you is what molecules are involved and how many of them are there that are involved. So our slowest step for this reaction is going to have one molecule of A plus two molecules of B and it's not going to form C yet because we haven't used up all of the A. So we're just going to have some sort of intermediate X. So we need to match this up to one of these reactions here and you'll see that it matches with B. Looking at question 12, which line in the table has the correct number and type of bonds in the structure shown? So all single bonds are sigmas, that's a terrible sigma, and all double bonds are one sigma plus a pi. Okay, so this is where I would start and I would just have a look and go, so how many pi bonds do I have? We've got two double bonds, so we've got two pi bonds, which means that it must be D. If we count up the sigmas, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So it is in fact D because we've got eighteen sigmas and two pi. Question 13, 2-methyl-hept-3-ene-2-one is an aroma molecule found in some types of tea. Which of the following shows a structural formula for the trans isomer of this molecule? So I would just start by trying to draw it out myself. Um, I don't think I would bother having a look at all of these. It's quite a complex name. So if we just go for the base of the name there, the, the hept part. Okay, so we're drawing, we're basically drawing hept-3-ene. So if we start with um, carbon-1, I'm going to do it in skeletal formula. So we're going to go 1 to 2, and then 2 to 3, and then we have a double bond. So I'm going to draw the double bond here, and then this part here, we're trying to draw the trans isomers. That means that the next bit has to be on the other side of the double bond. So we're pointing this way here, so it must go down this way. So we've went 1, 2, 3, then we started a double bond, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbons. So this is carbon 3 here, so this one must be 2. So if we draw our um, double bond oxygen on that one. And then on number five, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. There is our methyl. And then we just have to find which one of those matches that. And it happens to be that it's this one. I've just drawn it the opposite way around. So if you just flip that over, you'll find this is the answer. So it's C. So if we look at question 14, which the following does not exhibit hydrogen bonding between its molecules. So to get hydrogen bonding, you know that you need to have an OH bond, an NH bond or an HF bond. So I would just um, sketch these out. So ethanol, we've got C2OH, so that will have hydrogen bonding. Uh, ethylamine, we've got C, C, uh, NH2, so that will also have hydrogen bonding. Ethanoic acid, C, C, double bond O, OH, so that will have hydrogen bonding between its molecules. And then ethoxy, ethane. So here's your ethoxy part, and then here's your ethane. There's no OH bond here. It can hydrogen bond to water with the H from water bonding to the oxygen, but it can't hydrogen bond to itself. So the answer is D. Question 15. In the homologous series of amines, an increase in chain length is accompanied by what? So in general, an increase in um, chain length means that your volatility will go down because your molecule is getting bigger. So your volatility is going to be decreased. So it's probably going to be one of these two answers. And usually an increase in chain length also means that your solubility will decrease because it's becoming more oily than it is like water. So the answer to this one is B. Question 16, 
which of the following will react together to produce 2 ethoxypropane? So probably best to draw this out first. So if we just start with drawing propane, so that's going to be three carbons in a row. And then it's got two ethoxy, so on the second one is where our ethoxy is. So to produce an ether, the reaction that we've looked at is to do a nucleophilic substitution of a haloalkane. So to do this, you're going to want a haloalkane. And you want to have your nucleophile, which will be an alkoxide. So you're also like a metal alkoxide. So within here, here we have an alcohol and we have a salt. This will not produce what we want it to. Here we have a metal alkoxide and we have a haloalkane. So that's a possibility. Here we have an alcohol and a salt. Again, that's not going to produce what we want that to. And then here we have a, a metal alkoxide and another haloalkane. And it's just a case of working out which of these haloalkanes would work. So for B, you would have your chain and then your BR, and you would be replacing the BR with the OCC. So that would be ethoxypropane, right? just straight ethoxypropane. If we were to look at D, you'll see that we have our bromine on the second carbon. And if we were to replace that, we would have the O here and then the two Cs. So this matches up with what we drew at the start. This is the reagents that you would want to do that reaction with. Question 17. Aldehydes can be converted into alkyls by the reaction shown. So they've given you a reaction that you've not seen before, but that doesn't matter because you can just use what you know and put it in. Which of the following aldehydes would produce a primary alcohol? So a primary alcohol is one where your OH is on the end of the carbon chain. So you would want this R here to be an H. So if you want the R dash to be an H, the structure of the aldehyde that you would want would be this. And if that is what we want, then that would be methanol. Question 18, we've got a reaction here and we have to work out what is an example of. So you need to know your definitions of these. So hydration is where you add water to an alkene. Hydrolysis is where you split using water. So water would be a reagent. Dehydration is the removal of water. And condensation is where you add two molecules together and lose water. So if we have a look at each of these here, so we've got two molecules, we're joining them together and we're losing water, so this must be a condensation reaction. Question 19. When butene-1-ene reacts with hydrogen chloride, one chlorobutane and two chlorobutane are formed. According to Markovnikov's rule, what will happen? So if we draw this out, we're going to have butene. So Markovnikov's rule states that when you're adding on hydrogen chloride, the H will add to the carbon which already has the most H's attached, which is this one here with two. So you're going to end up having your H onto here and your Cl would go on to there. So you'll get two chlorobutane as your major product and one chlorobutane as a minor product. You will still get both of them, but you will get more of the two than the one. So A is your answer. And finally, question 20. When 2-bromobutane reacts with ethanolic potassium cyanide and the compound formed is hydrolyzed with dilute acid, the final product is what? So let's draw out 2-bromobutane and see what happens to it. So here is butane. Here's the 2-bromo. If we react that with sodium cyanide, eh, potassium cyanide, sorry, it doesn't really matter because that is just the counter ion. So we will replace the bromine with the CN. So we formed a nitrile and if we hydrolyze that with acid and water, then we will produce a carboxylic acid. And then it's just up to us to name it. So we've got one, two, three, four, so that's butanoic acid. And on the second carbon, we have a methyl, so that's two methyl butanoic acid, which is C. 
Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Remember to stay tuned for part three where we look at questions 21 to 30. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.